This is going to be your weekly chakra tarot and oracle energy check-in. If it's meant for you, it's meant for you. We're going to take a look at the energies you may be experiencing throughout your chakras. So in the comments, please let me know your word of the day, word of the week, what's the vibe. You know, we're still feeling the effects of the total solar eclipse. And of course, we're still in Mercury retrograde. So I would say that right now, from my sessions and live conversations with everybody, it feels like the emotions are running high. Some people are feeling left out in the cold. Some people are dealing with some wounds that are coming to the surface. And of course, this is all because we're embarking on new cycles. And, you know, the energy just says... You got to keep pushing forward regardless. A lot of tests are coming to the surface. Like I said, those wounds. And it's just testing you to see whether you're in the old or you're in the new. Whether you're able to communicate. Whether you're able to process and look at the bigger picture. Now, let's take a look at the overall themes and messages for this reading today. And we have here Cedar Tree, Wisdom. And I love this because... You know, wisdom and knowledge is, of course, very powerful. But let me repeat myself for probably the millionth time that, yes, knowledge is power. But what you do with that knowledge is even more powerful. It's about implementation of things that you've learned. And it almost feels like people are, you know, doing the final exam right now where, you know, you're putting everything out there, your best knowledge and experience. So with that, let's take a look at what else we need to know. And by the way, that is a number five card, which means big changes ahead. So with that, we have simplify your life. And I love that because it might feel right now that everything is really complicated. And I'm looking at this card thinking about the solar plexus, which is your personal power. And that means finding yourself again. This very strong yellow color really does... You know resonate with that solar plexus now here i see green right i see the heart chakra and so this could be a message too to burn some cedar i definitely love the smell of cedar um, maybe that's significant to some of you but i would say simplify your life you know implement your knowledge and your wisdom and see where it takes you now let's take a look here at another card for another message and we have here the waterfall inner power unbridled confidence and claiming your place you belong i mean if you're feeling left out in the cold understand that you belong in whatever the situation is i mean everybody adds value so remember your power remember your personal power here okay so that being said let's go to the chakra wisdom tarot here which as you can see has all the different colors of the chakras or energy centers in the body and we're going to start with the root chakra, which is Mars and your personal, um, excuse me, not your personal power, um, your foundation. I was going to say like your personal power, thinking of the solar plexus, but of course we're talking about building a solid foundation here. So let's see what we need to know. Ah, there we go. Four of wands, 11, 11, heart chakra. Everybody's building a brand new foundation. Again, trying to find your personal power to rebuild. Maybe many of you have had a tower moment recently. And that's okay if you have. Tower moments are not bad things, right? This is the energy that teaches us how to get out of a rut or out of stagnation. So let's see with the oracle cards what we need to know. And we have here the stars. I love it. Wishes come true. Peace, miracles, dreams, falling in love, hope, feeling blessed. So I think 1111 is really all of those things because really 1111 is a spiritual gateway. It's celebration, it's ascension, it's commitment, it can even be marriage. Whatever it is, it's telling you that you're opening up to something really special. So let's see what else you need to know. We have the beehive and somebody in live just now mentioned seeing bees. And, you know, this is about hard work and persistence and also being mindful, you know, so love this energy. And there's that yellow, funny, there's that yellow and green that we just talked about up here. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, sacral chakra, which is Venus, self-worth, self-value, and self-respect. And we have here the seven of coins. Look, the seed is planted. It's not going to harvest overnight. It will in due time. 
But essentially, this is saying trust the process, which I know is not easy for people, but it really is a reminder that you tend to your garden, you nurture, you don't try to rush anything or force anything or control anything. You simply just take your time. Okay, so let's see what else we need to know. There's the owl. Now, interesting, a lot of the conversations that I've had today in sessions are kind of coming through here because, um, you know, I was talking about the owl earlier today and the owl is what? Wisdom and knowledge and insights. So this is about seeing through the facade or a secret being lifted, being aware of something, knowing what's going on. Something may come to light here and um, I don't think you'll see it coming. It's kind of one of those things that just sort of pops up. Now, let's see. What else do we need to know? There's a crystal ball, seeing clearly. And this is my point. You're going to see clearly, you know? So let's take a look at the solar plexus, since that's something I've been repeating, you know, frequently here. The yellow solar plexus. And there is that ace of wands. So this is a spark, passionate new beginning, a purpose. What is the fire in your belly right now? Like, what is your purpose? What do you want to do? What do you want to embark on? What journey? So let's see with the Oracle cards. We have here the Emperor. So there you go, making power moves. There's that Aries energy that we're still in. You know, the Ace of Wands actually is Aries energy. And if we were looking at the top of this card, it does say King of Fire, or King of Wands, which is purpose and passion and nurturing something. So we are nurturing the garden. We are trusting the process, but we're also making moves all at the same time. We're not in waiting mode. You know, there's nothing worse than when you're trying to wait on something. It's like watching a pot of boiling water or watching paint dry or like imagine sitting at a plant trying to watch it grow. It takes forever. You don't even see what's going on underneath the surface. The roots might be doing something but you don't necessarily have the visual. You just have to trust the process. Now, with this, we have the chess card. And I love that with the emperor because, you know, the emperor is here to play chess, not checkers. This is all about making moves. And we don't want to go left or right or backwards. This is about onward and upward. And again, in a conversation that I had today, we were talking about the fact that, you know, you can't go back sometimes. Once you make a major move, you know, you want to make a boundary, you, you can't turn around. I mean, you can if you really want to, but it will negate the hard work that you've done to make the boundary or make the move. So it all depends on what your perspective is and, you know, where you want to go and how badly do you want to get there. So let's take a look at the heart chakra. What do we need to know about matters of the heart? Ah, the king of coins. Okay, so we know that the knight of coins is trust the process. It's very slow moving. The king of coins is nothing exciting. However, abundant in the long run. This is the king who has the most opulence and abundance because they've been slow and steady. And so this is why in matters of the heart, instant gratification is not going to get you where you want to be. You've got to trust it. You've got to show consistency. There's got to be some growth and evolution. And then when it comes to matters of the heart or relationships, nobody has to be fully ascended. Nobody has to be perfect. Nobody has to have all their, their life together. What matters is growth, evolution, and consistency, right? And the king of coins is someone who does those things. So let's see what else we need to know about that. Milky Way. Okay, networking and feeling connected. Now, this is a card of social media, and I don't know, um, maybe it's been a long road since you met somebody through social media or on a dating app, but essentially, there is abundance there with patience. Oh, the knight. Hmm. You know, the knight is a messenger. It's somebody who's fearless and confident and perseveres, the knight, um, or in this case, the rider in the Lenormand decks, if you know the Lenormand decks, um, is typically known as somebody who's younger. So that can be a younger lover. It can be, like I said, a messenger because pages in the tarot are younger. That's why they get the, the description of somebody younger. 
but this is somebody who's passionate with a fighting spirit who's making moves to become the king of coins to me this is somebody who has worked through being in the knight energy that wants to be in the king energy and this could be somebody who is riding in at the right time with the right message so let's take a look at the throat chakra. So if we're getting the messenger, let's see maybe what is being communicated right now. So we have uh, the Princess of Swords. Okay, so Princess of Swords or Page of Swords can be somebody who is logical and decisive. It can also be an energy of spying or observing, especially on social media. And we did just talk about this uh, with the Milky Way card. Now... To me, this is about somebody who's being logical, decisive, and to the point in regards to their communication. Let's see what the oracle cards say about that. Yeah, the bellows, a catalyst. There, there's an ignition. There's a spark. Number 33. Um, 33 is about lessons, or even like master teacher or ascended masters. This is somebody who's been schooled. Like This is somebody who's been learning some tough lessons in life, and they're they're more decisive, more logical with it. Oh, wow, well, we got the rings. Okay, contracts, agreements, bonds, commitments, strong connection, unions, lovers. Okay, well, hmm. Very, uh, very deep energy, deep soul connections. There might be some communication of that. Okay, let's take a look at the third eye, which is your intuition. This is Jupiter energy. And there's the Knight of Swords. Okay, so there could be this energy that says you've got to make a quick decision about something. You may not have a lot of time to think, and maybe that's a good thing. It means making an actual decision because, again, referring back to the lower cards here, we do want to trust the process. We do want to take things slowly. It's not a matter of like rushing anything. But what I'm saying is, is that there might be something that arises where you've got to make a decision. And that doesn't mean you're going to change your whole life in a day or in a night or whatever it is. But it means that you're going to have to just clearly decide something. And you're going to have to trust your intuition. You won't even have time to overthink it. It's just going to be like, okay, this is what I'm doing. Or if this is about a relationship, for example, based on the previous cards, okay, maybe this is what we're doing. But um, let's take a look at the Oracle cards with that. Justice, okay. King of Air, Libra energy, um, equal giving and receiving and balance. This is possibly uh, contracts, paperwork, uh, court. Maybe you're going through a separation or a divorce. It can even be marriage for that matter, a contract, right? So it really depends on your situation. But, um, you know, the King of Air is the king of swords, knight of swords, king of swords. We just talked about the knight of pentacles, the, the king of pentacles. Essentially, this type of energy is saying detached from emotion and just making a decision on something. So some of you may be making some big decisions. And with that, we have, well, yes, there's the answer. You can't even make that up. There's the yes card. The card says the answer is yes. The situation or event is right on track at this time. Okay. So somebody is saying yes. Now let's take a look at the crown chakra. Let's see what are the downloads that are coming in right now. What do we need to know? Okay, 10 of coins. And I love this. And look how it's a yellow card right underneath the yellow above that I talked about at the very beginning where it said simplify your life. In order to have your tangible fulfillment, you've got to simplify your life. You are going to have everything aligned once you start saying yes. And look at this card. This card is yellow and green, just like the top. So we are seeing consistency throughout this reading. Now, let's take a look at the oracle cards that go with it. And we have here the compass. Look, we've had 1111. We've had 22, 33. We're getting all the angel numbers. We know we have big changes ahead. The compass is saying, know where you're going. You're going towards your destiny. You're going towards your fulfillment and your happiness. You have to believe it and you've got to put yourself out there. That's what we were talking about earlier. Opening yourself up, right? Unbridled confidence. Claiming your place. You deserve to have that happiness. You deserve to have that love. You deserve to have that abundance. Let's see what else. 
interesting about this card because I'm going to tell you that it's not my favorite card but there is one word on here that I do really like and it says vulnerable this is asking you to be vulnerable and be open right because if you are living in shame or you're feeling shut down you know or you feel like you're serving time as in you're in your own sort of prison that's not the energy that's going to get you towards your abundance it's going to require you to be open and vulnerable and take risks and just to see what happens you know i guess it all depends on your perspective and where you're at but remember that anything is possible okay so let's take a few last cards just to kind of see um what we need to know and let's just shuffle it up here well, there you go. I love this. Okay, the yang energy is masculine energy. Now, some of you may say, well, hold on a second. Can I be in my masculine energy? Don't I need to lean back? Yes, it's important to have a balance of masculine and feminine energy. It's okay to lean back and recede, but it's also okay to be in your masculine energy when it comes to your personal growth and evolution. If you need to take steps for yourself, do it. That's the way to spark new energy. Look at this ball of energy here, this ball of fire that basically says, I'm going to put this out into the universe and see what happens. I'm going to trust the process. Okay. Now, if you're putting that energy into a relationship, as in you're chasing somebody, right? The more you chase them, the more they run. So you don't get the balance that you're looking for if you are in fact always chasing, always doing, always giving, over giving, overdoing, problem solving, whatever. It's 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 about balance. So there's the yang energy that says make a move. Okay. And like I said earlier, implement the wisdom that you've gained throughout your life and your experience. Now with that we have here milk and honey. This is so beautiful because milk and honey, and there's the elephant. It's interesting. I never recognize that in this card and the rainbow you know i was in a reading today and talked about the rainbow there's so many things that have come up in these cards today that are actually reminiscent of the conversations that i had um, rainbow is about serendipity and it's about perfect timing and sort of the calm after a storm you know where everything settles back down and you know milk and honey is soaking up the abundance in your life so I love this. When you make moves, this is where you get the rewards. So I really hope this resonates with you. Um, if you'd like to do a personal reading with me, the link is in my bio. We are going to be doing a full moon Zoom on April 23rd for the full moon in Scorpio. It is on my website. It's a two-hour live on Zoom event with a recorded reading that follows personalized for you. So again, I thank you again for your likes, your comments, your subscribes. It definitely means the world to me. So thank you very much, and I wish you an amazing day.